It's 10 a.m. on the East Coast, and we are talking to artist and filmmaker, film artist, uh, yeah, uh, Sarah Morris, painter, filmmaker, artist, um, writer. Sarah wrote an amazing homage to Alexander Kluge uh, for our upcoming magazine. Um, and actually, to the day tomorrow, we would have opened the two-person exhibition by um, artist, philosopher, um, writer, and uh, voice actor, maybe, uh, Alexander Kluge and Sarah Morris in the Tokyo space. Um, we wanted even to go ahead and install the work without um, them being able to go, able to leave um, New York, and uh, also the gallery had to be closed now. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, how are you? It's all right. And you, how are you doing? Uh, okay, I need a coffee. Oh, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I drink so much coffee in these, in these I know. days. It's really like, uh, although I'm, I'm getting used to the situation. Um, more and more. I'm not. No? I'm not. The amount of cleaning and also the amount of, uh, yeah, just all of the uh, phone conversations, it's hard to concentrate. Yes, so many Zoom meetings. Yeah. So where are you? I don't like that program. Um, I'm in Chilmark, Massachusetts, uh, which is on an island off of uh, Massachusetts, off of Cape Cod. And you are there in self-isolation? Yeah, I'm here. I, I, I'm here in my house uh, and, yeah, doing what they say. Are you able to work? I am able to work. Um, I mean, usually I come up here for periods of time and read and write and work on the computer. I mean, all of my paintings anyway are composed and uh, planned on the computer. Uh, so I'm sort of used to that. So I'm, uh, in a way, I'm doing what I'm normally doing when I'm here, which is thinking and planning uh, shows and talking to people and just sort of hanging out, which is exactly what's going on now. Yeah. But, ex but in, in huge doses, you know? So normally I'm distracted and I go back to New York periodically. Um, this is obviously very different. I'm not, you know, when I left New York, I knew it would be for quite a while, um, but I didn't realize quite how long it might be. But Hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, I was just talking about that. Uh, actually, tomorrow we would have opened our two-person show uh, with Alexander Kluge and you in Tokyo. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, even... I was looking tried... forward to that. Me too, yeah. And um, Actually, yeah. one of the last things I did in New York in the, in the studio, maybe I can send you some video later, is I did a test because uh, Kluge and I have been working on a series of films and I'm making a specific painting that will be uh, the projection screen. So we were doing tests in the studio, literally the last hour in the studio that I was there in New York, we were doing tests on the painting to see how the projector functioned uh, in relation to color and in relation to the scale of the pieces. So. This was sort of interesting to do. Um, I've never done that before. Used a painting as a film screen. Yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about the, um, your relationship to Kluge. And um, uh, so you, you were planning to have the uh, triptych painting as a backdrop of, this, of uh, the film, where which role he plays in. Well, okay. No, it's not the triptych that, that is the backdrop. It's, it's okay. another painting um, that actually, you know, when I made the film using Kluge, you know, it wasn't a collaboration. It was, it was, I was looking for a voice. I was looking for a male voice, a German male voice uh, to play this role. Um, uh, I was given the ability to shoot a film or it was asked of me, would you like to shoot a film in the Elbphilharmonie uh, in Hamburg? 
And yeah, I mean, it was a Herzog and Jamaran building. I wasn't really sure if I would be that interested, but I went to this space and it was extremely beautiful. Uh, I really liked it. I mean, I thought it was like a very densely psychological space. It was almost like a bunker or a hornet's nest. Uh, you know, every single inch of the space is designed for sound. And um, I started to think of what I would say in this space. I started to think of what should be said in this space uh, before it opened. So as I was thinking of this and working on the script, um, a couple of voices came to mind. And one morning I had breakfast with Hans Zurich, not at 5 a.m., but early. Um, and he was saying to me, have you thought of Kluge? And I said, no, I had not thought of Kluge. But I actually was, I was dialoguing at that time with Werner Herzog uh, in LA. And uh, I was interested in using his voice, but I thought maybe this would be too comic, you know? Yeah. Too, too overused. Um, a friend of mine used his voice for, uh, um, a children's book. I don't know if you've seen this book, but if you haven't, you should get it. It's called Go the Fuck to Sleep. Have you heard that? Yes, yes, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a friend of mine actually who uh, lives on the vineyard or is, is here in the summer, he is a poet. He wrote that, that story for his daughter. And um, the next thing I knew that Herzog was, was reading it. It was fantastic. Um, but I, I thought that it was maybe his voice is a little bit too overused. And maybe to, um, yeah, uh, well, to let me quickly determine up yeah. the volume so we can hear Kluge. Wait, should be back in a second. Sie bezeichnen die Rolle der Gesellschaft unverhüllt als theatralisch. Ihre Stile als Posen, ihre Krisen als arrangiert. So, and what's interesting is you, you write that homage, we always have at the back section of our magazine, we have this um, homage section, and you write an homage to Kluge, and you explain mm -hmm. him, called him, and asked him to be the voice, uh, 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 like an actor voiceover, and then mm -hmm. he, he refused, and I find that, because, or first he said, like, I'm not an no, actor. No, said, That's a no, no, no. He didn't refuse. He, he didn't refuse. He said, he, he, he just said, I'm not an actor. He wanted to make it clear that yes. he couldn't do anything other than read. And yeah. um, of course, this was absolutely, this is what I, I was using him as himself. I wasn't using him for anything other than what he um, already, you know, how, how he's already signified. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant, because I think very interesting is then you go into the detail that in your uh, film in, in Los Angeles, when actors appear, they appear as, as the persona they are and not as, um, as actors. So they are not acting, they, they are like themselves. You mean and, like De Niro? Yeah, all of them. No, it's yeah. like, it's like, it's like um, so always the actual person appears. Yeah. And, how, and, how different do you think that is than artists? I, I honestly, I find that relationship, I have, friendships I have with actors always uh, a little bit tricky. And, and, and it's funny that my daughter, for example, she's friends with um, the, the girl who played in uh, an amazing movie. It's called, I only can recommend to watch it. It's called System Springer, System Bomber. And it's a girl mm -hmm. playing a, a difficult child. And it's, with actors, I, I never know uh, who they are. You know, it's, I think I think I think they're always playing um, playing a role. They never uh, I never get them. They're always um, I don't know if they are on the safe finding trip. Always um, uh, they're in search of something, and that is quite interesting because they have like a bit of a fragmented uh, self. But they're definitely. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm friends with uh, a couple of actors and uh, it is interesting. Uh, I mean, it's a very, a very different arena, no? I mean, but this thing of being yourself, you know, if you are an actor and you're actually just playing, like how, I mean, do you think Brad Pitt is really, you know, I mean, it, it, with Tarantino, do you think he's really acting or is he being, you know, doing what he normally does? It's... Yeah. This I can't say because I, I don't know them otherwise. 
Yeah. And it's also funny because how, 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 how strategic as an actor you have to be and which roles you accept to stay a little bit flexible. Otherwise, automatically, this one dominant role will always be projected on you, um, which is not so far away maybe from, from an artist career. You know, you have to, if you bookmark your own practice too much, you lose kind of flexibility. So that's what I find so interesting with, with this immersive installation you were planning in Tokyo of then one painting um, and the projection on the painting. And you were just saying you did test. Would you have adjusted the color of the projection? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I like this idea. I mean, it's a synthesis. As you know, anyway, I'm always making paintings and I'm always making films at any one point. You know, there's a film in pre-production. There's a film in post-production. Uh, right now, actually, I don't have anything in post. I just have, I started uh, working on a new film, not with Kluga, another film. Uh, and I'm in the beginnings of that. But of course, it's come to, uh, yeah, I mean, the shooting sort of stopped. Everything sort of stopped. And, and now we're, you know, we're just in this sort of limbo at the moment. But actually, the limbo... This, this limbo that we're in right now is related to the content, you know? I mean, because what we're talking about, if you really think about it, all of, I mean, all of my work is, is uh, sort of profoundly urban. All of my work has to do with this sort of role of capitalism and its sort of tentacles, whether it's in the film industry or whether it's in Washington, D.C., whether it's in New York, in, human uh, in Wall right? Street. A lot has to do with, yeah. with human relations, yeah. very much. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Which is why Kluge was perfect. And going back to Kluge, going back to the genesis of like how this, this friendship started was this philharmonic space, um, which actually I didn't realize how, how interested in music Kluge is. But, but when I did the piece with him and used his voice, it was about this need for communication, this need for almost like a warning, um, not about the building, because the building is just a, an alibi or a pretext to have the conversation, a space where you could have this type of intense discussion, because it's an internal space, the Philharmonic space, and it has nothing to do with music in my mind, this is how I conceived it. Yeah. So Kluge, Kluge was the perfect voice. But then after having the discussion with Alexander, I realized this dialogue, this uh, communication, which I had started off in a very theoretical way, actually uh, became something else. And I realized this is actually, it began to be the source of a series of paintings uh, for me, which I call the sound graphs, which are based on uh, human speech and communication dialogue. And, um, and then also we started work on a series of short films, which we're calling uh, the Mondrian Machines. And Alexander wrote three short stories for me for the Tokyo show. Uh, one of them I was thinking about last night as I was sleeping, that one of them is called Grief Work for Kittens, which is really great. Um, really great. I'm not going to tell you what the, what the story is. But anyhow, he wrote three short stories for me and I recorded them with my voice and they are the basis for the Tokyo show. As and, well and, as and, like and the painting, which is, becomes the portal. And yeah, the painting becomes the portal. What's worth mentioning is that the sound graphs, somehow mm -hmm. it's loading right now here, but that the sound yeah. graphs are based on Alexander's uh, voice. So Speech. this one, yes. I think, it is here, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like yeah. you recorded it, and then it's that's called here. that's called machines do not make us into machines. Yeah, yeah. So and, so, but but it's my text, you know. So it's a it's a weird flip flop ping pong. But his voice, it's his voice, right? my Your text, text, my painting. Yeah, and and and, and the text he wrote. It's a copyright now, mess. <laughs> yes, and in the in the in the text you he wrote now, are you planning on uh, speak recording this and then reuse it again? I did record it. I did record it. Um, basically, he wrote the text, so it's a it's a weird role playing thing. It's the the roles are reversed. He writes the text, which of course he's normally writing text all the time. He's like a he is a machine in a way. Yeah, uh, an extraordinary writing historical time machine. 
Um, so he wrote three texts. He sent them to me. I recorded them in my studio. And then that became the basis for the paintings and that became the basis for the show. So um, there's a painting right now in the studio. That was the last thing uh, we were, you know, I was working on when I left. I mean, I was preparing uh, to be working on this for the next uh, month. Uh, you know, this is, I've been out here now five weeks. So um, it would have been, the painting would have been finished. It's called The Conversation. And, um, and this piece, which is like a vortex, which is a little bit like the hurricane symbol. Yeah, I don't know if you know these type of nautical symbols for storms. Yep. Anyway, it's a little bit like the hurricane symbol. This painting would have been the composition of uh, and the basis for the film screen. And so this painting is like a three meter by one, uh, well, three meter by two meter painting uh, that's sitting in the studio right now collecting uh, uh, sort of some dust, you know, in a Duchampian way. There's like some <laughs> dust on the painting. And uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's waiting. Um, I was tempted I was tempted to go back and to finish it, but the painting is almost finished. Uh, but um, it's, and, too, it's, it's too dangerous right now to go back to New York. And I'm looking at the film right now. Yeah, so yeah. The painting will be two meter by three meter. Yeah, yeah, and it's we'll cinemascope be, perspective, and we'll, yeah. And we'll be behind the, the, the screen now. I mean, behind the projection now. So you will, you, we will be able to see the painting through the projection, of course, of the film. And did I understand why right? you have not done this before? So it would be the first no. time. No, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's the first time, probably the first and only time <laughs> that I will yeah. use a, a painting as an actual device like that. But I, I really like it because it is a bit of a, I mean, when the paintings, when the canvases, I, I mean, I've been looking at images of the studio the last week. Um, I'm losing you. I oh, know I have you back. So when we were finishing up in the studio and I knew we were going to, I knew that we were going to have to shut down. Are you there? I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I knew we were going to have to shut down. I knew I was leaving town. Uh, so I left uh, like maybe a couple days before the, I think, official order came uh, to shut, you know, non-essential work. I think there was like a, a few days um, uh, there was an assistant of mine who I sent in to, to, to film the painting. And, I'll, and I'll, maybe I'll send you at the end of this, I'll send you a little, a little clip of this, this, this film where this painting is, is being finalized. But we didn't finalize it uh, before I left, but we almost finalized it. I wanted to, I wanted to be there for the final, uh, for the final um, moments of the painting. But we thought, you know, as you know, we thought the painting would be picked up by now. And no, of course, we, we yeah, to, to get it, yeah. Uh, out. you can't, you can't, of course. Now, this is a very interesting question. Is art essential? Because, you know, it was shut down as non-essential business. Is art essential? I think it is. It definitely yeah. is. I'm so happy to reopen the gallery by tomorrow. Yeah. It, and, oh, are you reopening tomorrow? Yeah, we're reopening and we are, wow. we are handling it uh, with time. Uh, I mean, Tokyo is closed. Um, yeah. It had to be closed, but Berlin is opening again and we manage it um, with uh, time tickets. So people can book a ticket um, for free of charge and come with one guest alone plus someone they are with. Um, but so you, you are on your, set, on your own. You don't have the risk into running into anybody. And you can, it's also a great experience. So because you, alone for your one person at a time. And, huh. and, 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 and this is legal. Yes, yeah, legal. Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, we could, we could just open, I think, but because we have so many people and I think it's better to have like a, a, a system um, uh, to keep it a bit uh, safe. You know, it's more comfortable for people to go. And I was just, while we were talking, I, I was showing them the film which you shot mm -hmm. in Japan. So it's kind of a very yes. interesting mix. So bringing back Japan to Japan uh, in a German gallery with a German. And it's also interesting that he's as a, you know, he, in Germany, we had this, we had this television program, uh, mm -hmm. which he forced the private television yes. panels to do. 
And I remember yes. when I was a child and my parents left uh, for the theater or some event and I was mm -hmm. home alone and switched on the television. Whenever there was DCTP, which his, was his art, art channel, I always was so annoyed. <laughs> You know, because I saw well, like, you know I who told you know who told me about this program. Uh, I mean, he did. I mean, Kluger told me about it uh, a bit, but Karsten Holler told me about it uh, when we were we did shows together at the same time in Beijing, like two years yeah. ago. Uh, I did a, a big show at the UCCA, and Karsten was doing a, a gallery show, and he we were talking about Kluger one night, very late in the night, and. And Karsten was talking about this technique he had for interviewing people. And he said he was really, Karsten said he was really, really good. But yeah, you, really you good. found it annoying. No, 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 uh, no, no. I was way too small. And no, I think he's amazing. I, 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 and later yeah. on, I, I um, and, and just now in Munich, um, when I met him, it, it's, he's such a, I mean, also given his age, I find it's unbelievable what great ideas and, um, and oops, Carly Kloss interview coming up. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, what, he's really, yeah, they, he's they, really. They, they see where my real roots are. No, if I was a child and I, I wanted to watch like some television and, um, and no, but now I find he's a real inspiration and I was really looking. I mean, we still oh, got it. He's, he, you know? he, he's, he's super inspiring. I could only hope to be like that at 85. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing. You know, he, he's amazing. I mean, I was in Munich uh, a couple, I don't know when it was, like the last time I was in Munich, we met for dinner. We had dinner uh, near his house. And then the next day I stopped by the Ari factory to watch him. Uh, he wanted to show me several different techniques he had come up with in relation to my paintings, you know? So he had devised almost like technological, uh, I don't know, like, okay, imagine like, you know, in, in film, when you sort of fade up, fade down, you do a wipe, you know, there's these sort of narrative devices that people create for, for editing. His crew, who was with him that Sunday, they had developed a series of these techniques based on like the compositions of my paintings. He's very inventive, you know, extremely inventive and constantly thinking about how other people, other artists, uh, how he can work with them and learn from them. I mean, it's, it's very, uh, I don't know many people like that. Most people are, as you say, sort of like stuck in, you know, what they do. He's very good at, he's very good at that, you know. He's extremely good at that. It'd be interesting to know what he was like back in the 70s, you know. Yeah, he also, I think that his artworks he was creating for the, for the second gallery space in Tokyo are very interesting. And also the way how he thought of which material to use and he saw that like aluminium printer. Um, but don't you think it would be nice to share uh, the voice recording of you reading his text? Well, I thought about that, yeah. I did think about that. But, you know, I'm speaking in English in a German gallery in Tokyo. <laughs> I mean, that might be a little bit, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we could do that. Let's, I mean, I have the recordings. Yeah, let's share it. I think it would we be have, nice. We have, we have three of them. And the stories are really like, this one grief work for kittens, I'm telling you, it's like, a, it's a killer. It's a killer story. It's, and, and it's really, it's super hardcore to have me read it too. You know, there's a part of Kluga that's quite cruel. And do you have access to it from, from remote? Um, uh, yeah, I probably do. I'd have to let's go on try. my server. That would be so nice. Let's try and make it available as an audio, uh, you know, when people, go yeah. school, they can read it to calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, so let me see. I yeah. One of the here. Yeah. Oh, Sarah, what is your favorite city beside New York? Oh God, that's so hard. I really, I honestly, um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'd have to say Paris or Tokyo, but honestly, I don't think any city is uh, by itself. I think, I think every city is um, connected to somewhere else, truly. Like, I can't think of New York without thinking of London. I can't think of London without thinking of Paris. I mean, it is like this Dickensian 
sort of chain, yeah? I mean, the exact chain that we're dealing with right now in this pandemic. Um, no city is, 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 is um, isolated, yeah? It's not possible to think. I also love Rio. So, but I, I mean, think, it's hard. I think, I think given the fact that we should be in Tokyo tomorrow celebrating your and Alexander's exhibition, we should agree on Tokyo. Okay, Tokyo. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. And let's make yeah. this clip available. And uh, everybody, yeah. uh, check Sarah's website out. Everything is there. You can see film, at least a part of it from... And I'll try to get you the, uh, the audio of the grief work for kittens. Perfect. And then we can share it on, on our website. Super. Super, and I hope we're going right. to do the show then in yeah, sometime. as soon as we can. Okay. Yeah. Ciao. Okay. All right. Take much. care. Bye. Bye-bye.